Hello, everybody. Uh, thank you for uh, being here. Uh, my name is Alfonso, and I'm a software consulting engineer from the CX Lisbon Center. So today, my colleague Cesar Albus and I will share with you a project which we developed for enhancing the compliance reporting experience within NSO. But we are not only going to share with you the technical details of the project, but also we will walk you through this development journey under a clean coding mindset. This is the agenda that we have prepared for today. We will talk a little bit about our uh, customer use case, which inspired this project, and the reasons why out-of-the-box NSO was not fully addressing the challenge implied. We will also share with you the design and details of the solution which we uh, created, and we'll walk you through, as I mentioned, this development journey under the scope of technical debt and clean coding. And last but not least, we're going to wrap it up with a demo. So having said that, um, our, the, uh, we're going to share with you a little bit of our uh, user story. So as you know, compliance reporting, it's a critical part when it comes to getting to know what is going on in my enterprise network, whether it is for health or for getting to know the configurations, having this document, it's very, very important. So when it comes to uh, fault discovery, the um, enrollment of new services, or even the planification of upcoming migrations, it is crucial to be able to have on demand this document, which has the truth and nothing but the truth of which are the settings that my target devices are missing and which should be there already. So one of our customers, which is a leading service provider, uh, came up with this requirement of having, uh, of having to produce this uh, report, but with uh, certain very flexible parameters. You see, our customer needed to be able to generate these reports by having as inputs uh, devices which came from device groups, which already existed, but also loose devices onboarded on NSO. And moreover, the settings which we had to take a look on these devices had to be from uh, device templates, but also from raw CLI configurations. So we needed to cater for that in order to fulfill the requirements. So at the time, uh, we checked what NSO could do uh, with the functionalities that it has out of the box. And as you might already know, NSO already has the capability to generate compliance reports. Um, diff calculation and, uh, compli and report rendering are two of those features that uh, NSO is capable of. And the parts of those features from NSO work really well. Um, they didn't quite provide the flexibility that our customer was looking for. You see, in order to generate a compliance report, we need to create a device template. We need to then proceed to create a device group where we will wrap up the devices that we want to check the compliance. And later on, we will use those nodes to generate our compliance reports. Now, now imagine that our customer, every time that he wanted to generate this compliance report, he had to go to NSO create a device template with the configuration that he, wanted to that he wanted to compare against the devices, create a device group with the target devices, and at the end, finally create the compliance report. And actually, there is a next step where you actually run the compliance report to generate the rendered uh, report. So, and the, as you can see, this is not the best fire and forget approach, isn't it? So, um, I will run through a quick demo just to show what I mean with all of this. 
So mm -hmm. as the first step, we are creating the device template, as we mentioned before, right? So we need to create the device template and put our configuration there. We need to specify the NED ID because it's mandatory on a device template. You need to specify the NED for our configuration. We insert the configuration and we commit the device templates on NSO. Okay, so the first, the, the second step is to create the devices group. We will wrap up our devices, our target devices, into a device group. As you can see, it's another step that we ha that we have to to go through. So here we select two devices that we have on our NSO. We'll wrap it up on a uh, on a device group, and later on we will proceed to to generate the compliance report. So to co to create the compliance report, we need to be in config modes and actually call compliance reports, reports, and then we are going to define the name of our report because later on we will need to use it to run it. And as you can see, there is several options, mm -hmm. but to our use case, we are going to use a template. So the option that makes sense, it's the compare template. So you're going to call it, and then we are going to use the device template that we created just a few seconds ago. And of course, what we want to compare mm -hmm. this template, we want to compare this template with my group of devices that we also have just created a few seconds ago. Okay. So now that we have our, um, uh, our compliance report in place, we need to run it. We need to generate the report. This is an extra step because we can generate the same compliance and the devices changes along the, the time. So we can generate the same compliance over and over again. So we define the out format, in this case, HTML. Mm -hmm. And we can already see that there is some violations in place. So we copy the URL and, well, we can open it directly on, on, on a text editor, or if you want, you can open on a browser. You copy-paste it, insert it, and mm -hmm. voila, you have the rendered compliance report. So you can see the steps that we had to do in order to get the compliance reports in place with the out-of-the-box functionalities from NSO. Thank you, Cesare. So as you could see, as we presented in this last uh, slide, there is an equation which is imposed by out-of-the-box NSO. Compliance report in HTML equals to device template plus device group plus compliance report node. So in order to address this and provide the flexibility that our customer needed, um, our colleague Lenin uh, came up with the idea of reshaping this experience reshaping the compliance report uh, rendering experience within NSO. And that's how we came up with uh, this idea of the enhanced compliance report utility. So this is basically an action package which is uh, mounted on NSO and which will help us to provide this flexibility, these different inputs and outputs for the uh, NSO compliance reporting. So what we have here is uh, the design and we're going to start with the inputs. So as you can see here, we have first our inputs for the devices. So here, it doesn't matter which are, where the devices come from. It could be either loose uh, devices onboarded on NSO or one or many uh, uh, device groups. Then we have the other input, which is our uh, source of configurations. These are the settings that we want to check if exist in these devices. Uh, security, uh, BTG interfaces, you name it. So it can either be an existing device template within NSO, or it can be a NetID and the native configurations, raw configurations straight from CLI. So now that we have these inputs, it's time to put our system to work. And depending on the inputs that we provided, we're going to have different things going on the moment we execute it. So for instance, if we provided the NetID and the native configurations, what the system is going to do is that it's going to take the NetID and create a dummy device. In this dummy device, we're going to do a dry run of the native configurations, the, the CLI configurations, which we also provided. And the results of this run, we are going to use them to render a valid, a compliant XML payload, which we're going to use later on for creating a dummy device template. So this template, it can either be ephemeral, it can be a dummy device template, 
or if the user wants so, it can be persistent so that we can store it with a, a provided name and we can use it later on for other comparisons. So now let's move on. Once that we have sorted out the part of the configurations, it's time to take our devices. So we're going to take our loose devices and all the devices within the one or many um, device groups that we provided, and we're going to merge them under a brand new dummy device group. What happens next? We already have the nodes that we need for the compliance report node. So we're going to create a brand new compliance report node which is going to be dummy using these elements which we just created. And now it's time for the action. We're going to execute, we're going to run this compliance report node, and we're going to have our HTML document rendered. However, as you could see, the de facto HTML uh, format, it's uh, quite plain, and it doesn't give you much information, you know, from uh, plain sight, you know, from uh, bird side view. So we're going to pass this uh, HTML through a render engine. So we can beautify it a little bit so that it provides more context when the user reads it. And last but not least, all the dummy elements which you created through the execution of the process, we're going to get rid of them. We're going to delete them from CDB. So, well, having read this design, we put hands on and we created a proof of concept for our customer. However, as you may all be familiar, when we have to deliver things fast, we come through something very interesting called technical debt. So on 1992, Ward Cunningham coined the metaphor technical debt. And it demonstrates that code that is rushed and shipped with the sole purpose of meet the customer deadlines or the deadlines in general, it will have a cost and it will come uh, in the form of interest. So we will have to pay it later. So what does this mean? It means that uh, developing an optimal solution takes time to think and to design. Um, and normally on the enterprise world, well, uh, we have to deliver our features and solutions as fast as we can, sometimes. And when we started to develop this project, um, it was intended to be a proof of concept. So we needed to test the waters. We were just writing some code, uncovered the possible pitfalls, fixing some bugs along the way, and of course, this try and error process led to a a tight coupled and uh, a tight coupled elements and hard and, and hard it was hard to test and extend and when the customer asked to add new features it became mm -hmm. clear that our approach had to be rethinked so that's how we came up with a more clean code approach See, refactoring, it's uh, an important part of the software development life cycle. It's an approach to continuous code improvement. And with that in mind, we realized that in order to keep up with the demanding uh, of the customer requests, we needed to go for a more generic approach. Um, one that could be more testable, more extend, uh, uh, ex um more extensible, and to do that, we need to identify um, the key responsibilities and uh, encapsulate them. So, um, this way, we came up with these three major categories. So, the data definition, the model definition, and the controller definition. You can see it has uh, an MVC pattern, more or less. So the data definition, it's basically uh, the payload that will be passed through our program. It will define the attributes and it will contain the content that will be pushed to, through our models. So um, you can see it has the parameters that we pass to, to, to the functions. The model, it's the representation of specific structures like NSO nodes. Those can contain logic or perform simple operations, but they don't have an overview of the system as a whole. So, uh, and, and then we 
can we come up with the, with, with the controller. So the controller, we can see it has the puppet master. So this entity has the overview and knows what to do and how. So it, it, it controls the, 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 the models and it's the one that knows how to execute this, those. As I mentioned, the data definition consists of a class that carries the data that will be used by the program. You can see it, for example, has a DTO, a data transfer object. And following this approach, we identified that each compliance reporting component had its very own particular attributes, right? For example, the template data, the device data, and the compliance report data, for example, they have very specific attributes. So um, in this case, we had to create a generic class to abstract um, all of this. But you might, you might say, so why do we have an abstract class that it's empty? So yes, uh, the, the abstract, the, the, this abstract class, it's empty and it, has the, and it has the only purpose to enforce a way of coding. See, Python is a dynamic language, but since version 3.5, we are able to use type hints, and this allows us to help the developers to understand how we can structure our codes in the future, how we want our future classes to look like. If you remember, a few slides back, we talked about the model definition. Our models represent the NSO nodes, and you can see them as a wrapper um, for to a wrapper for these nodes to add extra functionality. Methods uh, methods common to all to to all nodes will be abstracted and be placed on the abstract nodes. And for example, the delete and, exi uh, and exist method, those are methods that the logic is the same, like checking if a node exists on NSO and deleting a node from NSO, mm -hmm. the logic is the same and the process is the same. However, when we want to create a new node, the story is a little bit different. We need to define the parameters that we want to create that specific node. So they have specific logic that needs to be um, specifically implemented in the child classes that will generate from the abstract one. So here you can see the hierarchy of the current state of our models. Each of the models represents a node. And um, those, those, those nodes generate from the parent class. So we have the device, we have the device template, and you can see it's basically the steps, more or less, that we have to go through in order to create a, a compliance report. Uh, but each one of those have its own specific, uh, have specific logic. So for example, the, the device group, the device group, we, we, if we want to check how many devices there is in the device group, we have to create a method in order to, to get that information. But it won't be necessary for the device or for the other nodes. So it will be a method that will be placed on the child classes. So the, 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 the same base for common things will be on the higher level, but each one of mm -hmm. the nodes that have their own touch will be defined on the lower level. So, for example, uh, every node needs to prove that it exists. We need to check if the nodes are already there for validations, for validation purposes. So, um, on our method exists, th there, is, th there is an interesting scenario. Well, might not be that interesting for uh, some of you, but we need, uh, the, the exists method uses the key path of each node in order to know if it exists on the CDB, right? Uh, but this key path, it's different for each of the nodes. So we must, so, so, so to get the key path of each node, it's a, a good example that has to be specified on the child classes. So it's going to be an abstract method. So the abstract method we'll just define an empty, uh, an empty method that then we can re-implement it on the child classes. 
and adds our own specific logic. And if we can see there, the get path for the device, it will be devices slash, slash devices. It will be just a string, but it's needed and has its own uh, specific way of building up. And of course, if we are using t if we are using type hints, we also want to use enums, right? We want uh, to use enums to define what types are we going to receive on our functions. This way, instead of just passing a string, we can specifically say that this function, this model, will receive a type. So this will help the developers in the future. So the controller will receive the data from the NSO action and will transform it into a more consumable way. So we will get the information from the NSO for the CLI, for example. We'll receive it on our service. In this case, on, on, it's an action from our action. And we'll just transform it to be more consumable by our project. This data, it's then passed to the nodes in form of data classes, just like we mentioned before. We wrap up these, these attributes inside data classes. And then this data will be used by the controller to push it to our models, because that's data that will feed them. So for example, the controller has this overview about all of the models and all of the objects that we are controlling. So for example, to our controller, we can say, hey, controller, please create a dummy device or render a compliance report. And at the end, we can ask, OK, de delete all the, the, the dummy nodes. Because at the end, we need to purge the data that it's not supposed to be persisted. So, and that's, that, that's the, the flexibility that we want to give to our customer. So the nodes manager, it's also a context manager. And the context manager, basically, it's a built-in functionality of Python. And by using magic methods like enter and exit, we can define what happens within the scope of execution of a class. So in this case, in this very specific case, we can use the with statement to initiate our nodes manager. And right below, we can add all of the logic that we want to run inside that specific scope. So for example, if we are going to create uh, uh, dummy devices or device groups that are not supposed to be persisted, we are going to create it below the, the context manager. And when we get out, when we get out of our context manager, those data, this data will be purged automatically from the CDB. This way, we don't, we don't have to manually go back and check the trace of the data that we created on NSO, and we can, and we can just automatically wipe it out. So, OK, Alfonso will now uh, present you a demo so you can perceive what we've been talking about uh, until now. Thank Alfonso. you, Cesar. Thank you. We put some elbow grease. We put, invested some good time and effort in order to refactor the project under this clean coding mindset. And this is a living project. We're constantly adding more functionalities. However, we created this video in order to present to you the current status. As you can see here, we have the generate function, which is actually what we talked about for generating the reports. However, we decided to include an auxiliary function, which is validate. And this function is going to help us to actually check if our raw CLI configurations are valid before actually putting them to work in generating a compliance report. Nobody wants to have some typos or things that are not compliant with a net ID. So it's very simple. We have our configuration, we have our net ID, and the, our action is going to tell us if it's valid or not. In this case, we put some good uh, AAA security settings. We evaluate it against the uh, net ID, and they're good to go. So now this is how it looks on the Wave UI, our uh, refactor project. We have two different sections, choice configuration, which is how are we going to provide the configurations inputs. And we have two options here. Either we use the native configuration, as we saw before, NetID, raw CLI, or we can use uh, device templates which are already in place. Now we have to choose our device. It can either be all the devices in NSO, it can be specific device groups or loose devices as well. Now it's uh, showtime. 
We're going to be providing the, uh, well, the TACX settings that we tested before. We're going to be providing the net ID. Here, we're not going to provide a, a name. So this, this means that this is going to be a fire and forget approach. We're not going to be keeping this device template. Here, we're going to select one of our existing device groups. Let's say our iOS devices um, device group. We're going to put it, the, put it there. And we're going to be executing the generate action. So what is happening right now is that all these ephemeral, all these dummy resources, all these nodes are being created. And once everything is said and done, we are running the built-in compliance report solution from within NSO against all these different iOS devices. It's going to be uh, executing it against all of them. And when it is ready, we're going to get this resulting HTML. However, this HTML is going to look very different to what the default solution is providing us. So we're opening the browser here, and voila. We have here a formatted uh, uh, HTML, which shows us which are the discrepancies, I mean, from the device group, which are the devices which are actually missing configurations. And we can see them here. This is an execution of the diff, and we have here clearly pointed which are the settings that our devices are missing. This is a report ready to be delivered for executive decisions. Now, let's say that we want to keep this uh, device template from our uh, TACX configuration for later use in other executions of this action. So we're going to provide here in the persist uh, uh, option a name for this, um, for this resource, because this is going to be, at the end of the day, a device template within CDB. So we put it there. Now we're going to select any given device from our device list. Let's say lab iOS 1. We execute the report. It's going to go through the same process. And then we're going to get our resulting HTML. As you can see here, we're going to copy it. We're going to check if it's good in another tab. There we go. Only a single device, and we're missing all these settings. However, if we go back to our uh, uh, action package and we check our template names, you can see that it is here. And I can reuse it again and again for checking compliance on different devices and device groups. So in this case, I'm going to select this device, this iOS. I'm going to generate the report. And once it's said and done, I'm going to open this HTML. And surprise, there are no violations in this one, as we can see in the render report. So this is basically the demo of our project. And this is all what we have prepared, uh, prepared for you today. Now the microphone is open to you in case you have any questions. Yes. Hello. Thank, thank you, guys. Yeah. Uh, so is this solution already available for customers? Or where could I you know, start using it? We can have a conversation later on. This is uh, uh, already developed, uh, deployed, sorry, for our um, customer. It's a service provider. We're constantly adding features. But um, yeah, we can have a, a, a discussion on that. And a follow-up question, because all of your examples were always with Cisco IOS. Uh, is, does this support like a multi-vendor uh, environment, or have you only tested it for Cisco? We actually, well, we've tested it with a couple of Cisco nets. And uh, also, if I'm not mistaken, it was uh, Huawei and other vendors, right? Yeah. So basically, as long as the native out-of-the-box um, functionality from NSO works with other nets, this will also work for uh, the other nets, right? Uh, because the, the, we are using the core functionality from NSO. We are not creating anything revolutionary. We are just creating a layer of abstraction, let's say, and adding new functionalities to the existing functionalities mm -hmm. of NSO. Ah, OK, because I was asking that because I, uh, some of the nets, I think they don't have nets in, if I'm not mistaken. So I was, I was wondering if that's the limitation when you say dummy devices. Is it like NetSIM devices? No, when we say uh, dummy devices, that means uh, uh, nodes that, in general, right? Not only devices, but mm -hmm. these are nodes which are not going to live longer than what it takes the execution of the action. Because once all the system runs and does all these different uh, tasks, we're going to get rid of them. So we have them well identified, 
and we're going to go and delete them from CDB. So they leave no trace. That's why they are dummy. They are ephemeral, so to say. OK, yeah. OK, got it. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other uh, questions? All right. OK. That's all. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good job.